Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are doing well. So today I will be reviewing the Rovectin Skin Essentials Activating Line which I have been using for over two months now I think. I can't even remember but I am about to finish these products so I thought I would share my thoughts on them with you. So if you have been catching up with my skincare related videos then you might know that Rovectin and I didn't really have a great start because I started using their Sika line and I just didn't really like any of the products in that line. Nonetheless, there is no perfect brand and you can't expect a brand to have products that will all be suitable for your skin type, right? So thankfully, I gave Revectin another chance with their Skin Essentials Activating range. Because this line seems to be more targeted towards people with dry or drier skin, I didn't really thought that it would be suitable for uh, someone like me, someone with oily skin, but I was wrong. Before I begin talking about the skincare products, I want to give a quick shout out to Isho, which is an LED makeup mirror company. So they sent me their best selling mirror called the Venus Pro which is a vanity mirror with LED light surrounding it. I love that you can switch the light from cool tone to warm tone and you can even dim the lights. I'm not sure if you have noticed this from my vlogs or whatever but I actually don't have a vanity in my room and so surprisingly this mirror actually came in really handy for me because prior to this I've never actually thought of getting a vanity mirror. Um, it's very lightweight and you just charge it with a USB cable, you can even fold it up and so it becomes really compact, it doesn't even take up much space. If coincidentally you're looking for a vanity mirror or if this conversation has sparked your interest to get a vanity mirror, I'll leave the link to Venus Pro in the description box below so you can check them out. So without further ado, I'm going to begin with the cleanser. Um, so for this cleanser, I have to be honest and say that I didn't love this cleanser. In fact, I did stop using it for a good period of time before I started liking it but still not loving it. So what I like about this cleanser is that it's very very gentle on the skin and it contains three different forms of hyaluronic acid to help retain moisture whilst cleansing. Other than that, it also contains centella that can help soothe irritated skin. Whenever I use this cleanser, I've never felt that tight feeling before which is why I do like to use it whenever I'm planning on using a harsher, stronger uh, chemical exfoliant or after I've used a harsher or stronger chemical exfoliant as in like the very next day when I wake up and cleanse my skin. Um, finally, the last thing I like about this cleanser is definitely the packaging. I feel like palm packagings are very very convenient and hygienic. However, as I've mentioned, I don't love this cleanser and the main reason is simply because it doesn't foam and I generally prefer foamy cleansers. Once again, foamy cleansers tend to have a bad rep thanks to SLS which is a very harsh and drying surfactant but there are actually gentle surfactants that are good for the skin such as SLES and many other more. I like that foamy cleansers tend to feel more smoother and gentle on the skin especially if you have acne, I feel like it's more important to be ultra gentle on your skin rather than dragging your cleanser all over your face, causing unnecessary irritation and friction. Again, people with sensitive skin tend to stay away from foaming cleansers because of the impression that surfactants are really um, irritating and drying on the skin. But once again, there are gentle surfactants that are available in many cleansers that are suitable and good for people with sensitive skin. But if you're not like me and you do enjoy a gel cleansers that doesn't foam, I do recommend this cleanser because I feel like it's a really good gel cleanser that is effective enough to cleanse away excessive oils and dirt on my skin. But at the same time, it doesn't strip away all your skin skin's natural moisture so I think this is a great product for people with dry or dehydrated skin and it's also pretty affordable. Moving on, I'm going to talk about the Skin Essentials Activating Treatment Lotion. So this lotion is just packed with so many great and proven soothing and hydrating and for me, most importantly, non-clogging ingredients and they are glycerin, boosting glyco, penicillin glyco, um, niacinamide, caffeine, sodium hyaluronate, adenosine, pentanol, and if I'm not wrong, this also contains like five different types of hyaluronic acid. In addition to that, this is also alcohol-free and fragrance-free and as I've mentioned earlier on, it's oil-free. So even though I do love me some natural ingredients such as snail, mugwort, centella, and etc. If I have to choose between natural ingredients versus these chemical ingredients such as sodium hyaluronate, niacinamide, caffeine, adenosine, pentanol, and etc. I do think that chemical ingredients tend to work more effectively on the skin. So for this lotion, personally, I like to use it after my toner and after my treatments. So like after my AHA or BHA or retinol because this has a slightly thicker consistency and it just feels so 
oil soothing on the skin. Like whenever I feel like my skin craves hydration, especially after I've used a strong chemical exfoliant like retinol or AHA that I'm a slightly more sensitive towards, I will just reach out for this product and it always makes my skin feel so hydrated and calm like instantly. If you have dehydrated skin or a broken skin barrier and at the same time you also have acne prone skin, I highly recommend you to check this product out and include it into your routine because I find that it really provides a great support to your skin's health, especially if you want to use those drying acne treatments like benzoperoxide, sulfa, BHA, AHA, retinol, and etc. Recently in my routine, I have been using AHA, BHA, and retinoid more frequently in my routine and so I find that it's even more important for me to include hydrating products like this in my routine. The other product from the Skin Essentials Activating line that I have been absolutely enjoying is the serum. So this product is so highly raved that I actually bought it myself many many months ago. I'm sure you can tell I am about to empty this product and the reason is simply because I have been really enjoying it. So comparing this with the lotion, it doesn't contain as many soothing and hydrating ingredients but it does contain glycerine, niacinamide, sodium hyaluronate and adenosin which is good enough for me. Because this serum contains more emollients, it also feels more moisturizing on the skin because it is able to help seal in moisture better. If you have very oily skin, you can definitely use this as a moisturizer. In fact, sometimes I do use this um, as my daytime moisturizer so it's kind of like a two-in-one. Similar to the lotion, I will always reach out for this whenever I feel like my skin needs that extra boost of hydration. Since this is oil-free, I will also recommend it to people with acne-prone skin who wants to fix their broken skin's barrier without using something that is potentially clogging. The only downside about this product is that it contains an essential oil which may or may not irritate your skin. Some people are more sensitive towards essential oils, some people are not, so it really depends. Personally, I did not experience any irritations from this product. Uh, in fact, I really like the smell of this product. Uh, it doesn't have a very strong like essential oil smell but it does smell very skincare-ish. So the final product which I've tried and tested from this range is the sunscreen. So this is my least favorite product in the range and also in today's video. Uh, once again, it's not exactly a bad product. It does not contain any drying alcohol, any essential oils, but it's probably not the ideal sunscreen for people with acne prone and oily skin like myself because it does contain four different types of seed oils including sunflower oil and almond oil which can be clogging and heavy on the skin. To add on to that, this is also a physical sunscreen. So physical sunscreens tend to leave a white cast um, which is something that I'm usually not bothered about but I feel like because this product is so oil heavy at the same time, it just has a really thick consistency that makes it really difficult to apply an even layer and to blend into the skin. So I find that by the end of the day, it tends to look really patchy. In general, because I have oily skin, I also prefer lightweight sunscreens so I tend to prefer chemical sunscreens. Nevertheless, I am actually about to empty this sunscreen because I have been using it on my neckline and behind my ears. Sometimes I also really like to pat a really small amount of physical sunscreen over my chemical sunscreen just to give myself an extra layer of sun protection. Um, but still, this is not a product that I will repurchase or recommend to people with a similar skin type as myself, which is oily and acne prone. So those are the four products I've tried from the Rovectin Skin Essentials range. Um, obviously my favorites are the lotion and the serum. In fact, I'm actually quite sad that I'm about to empty them, especially the serum. But I feel like I actually will repurchase them because they have been such a great support to my skin's health and they have been really helpful at maintaining the hydration levels in my skin. So if you're interested in these products, please open up the description box because as usual, I'll leave the links to them in there. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. I want to thank Thank you so much for watching. If you have used these products, feel free to let me know what are your experiences with them in the comments below because I would love to know. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!